write this down. I'm going to become living proof of what's possible. And by the way, like some of you might not write anything down and you just won't be living proof at all. And you'll be here in this room today. You could have changed and you just fucked it off. Um, but I want to tell you guys, you guys can be living proof for like what's possible for other people. And I just don't think that a lot of people, when they show up to work, like they're thinking like, I'm going to be the example for someone else. They're thinking like, I'm going to pay my bills, right? Or like, I want to have this goal for my family. They're just not thinking bigger. So what I decided to do is I put together some slides, right? So that you guys can actually have something to write down. Because I can sit here and talk for fucking 18 hours and like people will listen and they get caught up in it, but then they don't write anything down. And then when you leave, you're motivated. And then in two weeks, you're back to where you started. It's like this cycle of like shit. So I figured if I just write some stuff down, you guys can look at it. When I go to the next slide, I'd write down what I'm talking about. And then if something else like, it's like, oh, that's good too. I'll write that down. Is that cool? And by the way, like, I mean, I can send these to you when I'm, when I'm done, but if you don't write it down, it, what's written is retained. Your brain is like the king of like deleting information. Dude, you guys literally have like 70 to 80,000 thoughts going through your head a day. They just stream and then you delete, 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 delete. And the sad thing is most people hold on to negative shit. If somebody was out in the parking lot right now and somebody came in here and they was like, dude, this guy just gave a million dollars to this old lady. Would you guys all run out there? Most of you wouldn't. But if somebody's like, dude, this guy just got run over in the parking lot and it ripped his leg off. <laughs> You guys be like, no fucking way. Let me see. And you'd be like, I want to see the leg. It's like somebody does something good and like, am I right? Yeah. Hey, you guys are mad at me because I'm telling the truth. But that's just the way it works. People are just stoked to see, like their endorphins fire from negativity, which is why the news just runs negative shit. Because dude, if they were positive all day and they're like, today we're going to talk about all the good deeds everybody did. They'd be like, fuck. But they say, hey, today we're going to talk about how many houses got broken into and there was 13 shootings and a, and a baby's face got mauled by a dog. Everybody's like, oh my God, let me see. It's like, it, it's, see, you guys are like mad at me because the world's sick. It's just the way people work. So anyways, I'm just going to talk about maybe reprogramming, right? The life that I had that wasn't a very good one. And even if I made money, everybody understand this. The financial gain is becoming the person you need to become to make financially the money you want to make. Even if you get lucky enough to be a shitty person with a shitty core and you're just the hardest worker in the room and you make some money, it's all going to fall between your fingers and you're going to lose every bit of it. You guys get it? I know a lot of people right now that make a lot of money. Matter of fact, I made a lot of money for a long time and it just fell between my fingers and I didn't get to keep any of it. So what I'm doing is I'm going to have a conversation with me and I'm going to act like I was your age, however old you are, and I'm going to say, I wish somebody had had this conversation with me when I was younger. And then that way, like you guys are alive in the same era that I'm alive. We built a nine figure business. We make a lot of money. We have a really good life. We do cool kick ass shit. We don't stress out. I like who I am. I look in the mirror, I'm proud of me. Seem like my team is all proud of them, right? We don't get caught up in bullshit that everybody else gets caught up in. Everybody's like, what do you do when you're not motivated? I'm like, I don't know, right? Because I'm fucking jacked up all the time. And people are like, well, how do you get through hard shit? I'm like, fucking winners deal with hard shit all the time. And you're like, what happens when there's a problem? I'm like, only people that solve problems get paid the most money. So like, like, like problems are good. Opportunity. Yeah, but like, but they're good though. They're just, and that's why when I started training Jordan, this isn't about Jordan and it's not about me, it's about you guys. You know, you were with us, you know, you saw, I was like, hey dude, you gotta fucking level up, right? And what happened? He made a decision, he started changing and your marriage is better, Andy, your life's better. Yeah, yeah, he was fat. Hey, and, and by the way, listen, you know the cool thing is, is that compared to most other people, he wasn't fat. Okay, so everybody write this down. Better than most is poison. Okay, because I hear that all the time. I said, babe, our marriage is better than most. And she goes, you know what? Don't fucking compare our marriage to other people's marriage. Okay, like rule number one. You know, my team's better than most. What the fuck does that mean? Do we have the best team or not? If it's not number one, then you're second. And second fucking sucks. So like, I, so I, I want to tell you guys, the, the whole goal, all this stuff that I'm going to go through is if you can become this, you make as much as you want. If you don't become it, you, you just don't make that much, okay? And by the way, listen, man, you're not going to be fucking happy. And by the way, like, I'm okay, like, not being happy at all the time. Everybody understand this. There's days that my jaw's numb, I got a fucking headache, I got problems, everything's wrong and I'm not happy, but I still love my life. 
So like everybody, it's not about always being happy, but you can be happy most of the time, okay? You know what I'm saying? You can still love your life and everything's not going great. But I would put the warrior, because I'm all about warriors and shit. Um, the deadliest weapon is your mind. God gave you a heart and he gave you a mind. A lot of you, you got to make sure you examine your heart and you don't have any darkness in it. Because if you got darkness in your heart, I'm going to tell you this, you're going to fuck someone over and you're going to ruin everything in your life. And most people that have darkness in their heart, they burn their life to the ground. Like, no one else burns your life to the ground. You burn your life to the ground. Like, you fucking fucked you. Nobody fucked you. You fucked you. Okay? So in this mind thing right now, um, I always like to write down gatekeeper. Um, you're the gatekeeper to your mind. I envision uh, a piece of real estate. Let's say, like, there's a piece of real estate and then there's, like, a guard shack at the beginning of that, uh, of that neighborhood. And who's gonna let people in? The guard shack. And you're the guard shack. So if I say something today, you can say, hey, is this guy telling the truth? Is this good information? Is this good for me? Yeah? Okay, cool, I'm gonna own that now. That's good, this guy's gonna be a part of my community now. And if I say something stupid or negative or someone says something, that's gotta go. That cannot take up space in your head. So you gotta put boundaries around your head. Uh, the most important thing you'll ever do is guard your mind. So that's why I said, like, your mind's the most important thing. Um, and then your greatest responsibility in life is to be in control of your thoughts. Dude, listen, people say they wanna be financially free. Fuck financially free. You wanna get financially free? Be free in your mind. What does that mean? That means nobody can fucking operate or run you. You run you. When you wake up, you tell yourself how your life's gonna go. Most people, they say they, they do that. They don't really do that. They run around with things. You ever guys ever feel that anxiety feeling? That's because you're not controlling your thoughts, man. When you, when you control your thoughts, you can, almost, you can predict to the T how your life's going to go. Okay, so um, my wife can't make me happy. My team can't make me happy. Only I can fucking make me happy. I control this. How, and by the way, how I control my thoughts is how my perspective also operates. And so a lot of people in here, you, you've got a good mindset, but your perspective fucking sucks. Like the way that you see something. Like if something bad happens right now, do you see it as like, fuck, I got fucked again? Or do you see it as like, hey, there's got to be some good in this? Like there's got to be some good in this somewhere, right? There's got to be a learning lesson in this and I'm just going to grow today. Okay, so like anyways, it's all mind, okay? Um, we're not really sure how we're doing this today, but we're going to do it like that. Um, Okay, so I put this down. The quality of your life will always come down to the level of your leadership. So listen, we're going to just reframe this. The life that you have now, the relationships you have now, right, the income that you earn now, that's the quality of your level. That's the level of your leadership right now. Okay, and by the way, there's three levels of leadership. So, so you want to write this down. Uh, level one is going to be self-leadership, Okay. By the way, sales is leadership, okay? Sales is leading. Um, when I sell someone, what am I doing? I'm leading them to make a decision. I'm leading them through a process. Um, anything that I want in my life, I'm gonna lead someone to give it to me, am I right? Okay, cool. You can't lead anyone else if you can't lead yourself. And, and I see a lot of people that try to lead other people, and the reason why no one will let that person lead them is because they clearly can tell that you're not leading yourself. Do you guys take advice from people that don't look like they're taking the advice they're giving you? Do you guys take advice from people that you don't want to become? This is so weird. People come to me all the time. They're like, hey, what would you say if this person said this to you? Because I've got my family saying this or I've got people saying this. And I always just say, do you want to be like them? Let me ask you a question. Do you want to trade places with their life? Do you want their life? No? Well, why the fuck are you listening to them? Dude, common sense. If you don't want to be someone, don't listen to them. If somebody goes, dude, you're, do you want to be them? Don't even let that shit enter your head. Now, if you do want to be them and you do want a life like them and you do respect them, then listen to them. I'm not saying you have to listen to all of it. Take the good, leave the rest. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, but the quality of your life, which means if you guys all want a great life, which is why we're all here right now, you guys got one life. It's short. We got a lot to do. The level of your leadership will de determine the quality of your life. Okay. Um, this one right here, ev I treat everybody as a business, and that just means this. That, um, I sold cars when I was a kid. Um, that was my lot. That was my finance department. Those were my cars. This is my fucking lot. That's the way it worked. Um, everybody's like, oh, well, you know, I don't have my own business because I work for fucking whoever. That's your fucking business. What the fuck are you talking about? That's your business. That's your, you say, well, I don't, oh, I don't own the solar company. Motherfucker, that's why you're broke. Because you don't fucking take ownership of the solar company. You don't take ownership of whatever. 
Either you're an entrepreneur or an intrapreneur. Both can get rich. Entrepreneurs are the ones that take the risk, they get sued, they put up all the liability, and you know, they, they take all the responsibility, they pay all the payroll taxes. Dude, they do the marketing, they pay for the buildings, all the expenses. Dude, being an entrepreneur is a fucking bitch. Be very careful what you ask for. People say, I wanna be an entrepreneur. Oh, really? Come take over payroll for a minute. Oh, wait a minute, I don't wanna be one now. Now I wanna be an intrapreneur. I don't want any of that. Oh, so you wanna be the one that works for the entrepreneur and blows them up. That's who you wanna be, yes. I will tell you the greatest position on planet Earth is the entrepreneur. To be an entrepreneur is very, very scary. Hey, it's, it's totally worth it as long as you got a stomach for it. If, you're, if you can lose a couple million bucks and keep rolling on and it doesn't mess with you, be the entrepreneur. But this one right here, we're all in business. Every one of you guys own your own business, right? You own your own business. Doesn't matter who you work for. That's your lot. Those are your cars. Those are your solar panels. That is your company. These are your customers. This is my marketing. You treat it all like it's yours. It's your business. So changing the business the fastest will always be changing the psychology of the leader. That's the way the leader thinks. Okay? Who's the chokehold on every, uh, on every uh, organization? Who's the chokehold on every, on every uh, company? Who's the chokehold on whether a company goes to the next level or someone makes more money? It's the person running it. It's the leader. So like, there's no way that a company can grow if the psychology of the leader doesn't grow. And by the way, maybe the leader gets mad too quickly. How many of you right now, there's a thing that I learned when I was younger, and it said the end of your fate ends at the anger that you have. And most people have anger that rises quickly, and that's how they ruin all their customers. That's how they ruin the relationships they have with the husband, wife, girlfriend, boyfriend. And that's how they, you get, bro, you get too emotional too quick. Hey, I'm gonna tell you, I take everything personal. I really do, like I, I take shit personal. People are like, oh, don't take it personal. I fucking do take it personal. I take shit personal, um, but I'm not gonna get emotional. Like I'll take it personal, but I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna get emotional. I'm not gonna get mad and start yelling at people. I'm not gonna do all that stuff. Dude, I've seen a lot of good employees leave companies that they would have stayed, but somebody got mad and said something they shouldn't have. I've seen marriages go through divorces because somebody got mad and said something they shouldn't have. And nobody could ever forgive it, okay? So anyways, my point is changing the psychology of the leader which is the person that's in charge will, will change the business faster than anybody else. Again, we're going back to the headspace that you have, the way that you think, the way that you see the world. Hey, how do you guys see the world? How do you think the world sees you? Dude, I think the world fucking loves me. I really do. And people are like, dude, they don't love you. I'm like, I fucking think they do. <laughs> By the way, isn't it the way that I think that matters? Yeah. Yeah, like, guys, can I ask you a question? Do you think people that become successful, like, Somebody tells them, hey, you're gonna be successful, or do you think that they're, that they're delusion, they're delusional that they'll be successful, so they just end up fucking being it because they really don't give a shit what anyone you fucking thinks. Yeah, like dude, like these people are crazy. By the way, if you're passionate, you'll make it a little bit. If you're crazy, you'll make it really far. Okay, if you if you crack open any successful person, I promise you they're fucking batshit crazy on the inside. Okay, it's just the way it works. People may say that's not true. I know this one guy. Okay, you, you live that one. I'll tell you, they're fucking crazy. Um, this is a big one. I put leaders live for a vision that's bigger than themselves. Okay? Can I ask you guys a question? Your whole life, have you guys wanted to be treated good? Yes or no? Yes, sir. I've always wanted to be treated good. Fact is, I haven't been treated very good much in my life. So you know what I know? I know that anything that I do from this point forward in my life, I know I'm going to treat people really good. Why? Because I always wanted to be treated that way. So I'm going to live for a vision that's bigger than me. Guys, I learned, I, I, I started getting rich when my intentions changed. This is crazy. So here I am, I'm wanting to make commissions and I'm wanting to sell. And so you guys are like, man, I need to make this sell. No, what you need to do is treat people better than they've ever been treated. What you need to do is make people feel better than they've ever felt with anyone else in their life, feel that way with you. I want, when you talk to somebody, I want them to never be able to forget you. That, that, that's an intention. Dude, this is a whole nother fucking game. See, I know the rules to the game. The game has changed, okay? COVID was the best thing that ever happened to this world. Let me explain why, especially if you guys will really understand my perspective here. So when COVID happened, people had to wear a mask and stand six feet apart. Everybody was made for communion. Everybody's made to be close. People are made to like love each other and be close and talk and have conversations and, and people like that shit, okay? 
There's this thing called oxytocin. And when people are close to each other, when they're lovey-dovey, feeling, hugging, and all that shit, they fucking feel good. They love each other. Trust increases and everything's good, right? People, it's like this chemical that gets released. Well, when COVID happened, they fucking killed all of that. Well, dude, you know what I was like? What if I go and I start bringing it back and bring a lot of it? Have you noticed any time you come into our company, everybody fucking hugs you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know how to fucking bring that oxytocin through the fucking roof. Serotonin, oxytocin, dopamine, all the motherfucking chemicals that a human being can, can bring out, we strike it in people. And they feel that around us. And what does that do? That creates attachment with us. I'm just telling you, you guys want to know how to be the best? Hey, listen, if you got a good product, I have a very good product. I have a very good business. You guys have a good business. If you guys don't know how to make people connected to you and you don't know how to create relationships, listen, transactional selling is dead. If you're doing transactional selling, it's called a commodity, which means it's a race to the bottom. But I can price my shit wherever I want because I do more than transactional selling. I do relational selling. All these chemicals, these, pe- these things make people feel good. Matter of fact, they make me feel good. So like I share this with other people. And that's the reason why we're growing like wildfire. So when you're in here and you're talking to me, you're going to understand, dude, I sell on a whole nother level. I'm not going to do like sales like a script and word tracks and, you know, tonality, body language. Yeah, that's all cool. Dude, that's baby selling. Real big daddy selling is fucking transfer of chemicals. Hey, what's going on, y'all? I know you're getting a ton of value watching this video right now, but Andy Elliott wanted me to tell you, listen, I'm the number one wholesaling coach in the world. In October 25th and 26th, right around the corner, Andy Elliott and I are hosting in my brand new office in Scottsdale, Arizona, over 9,000 square feet. We're gonna show you exactly how to build a seven figure wholesale operation in 12 months or less. Listen, Andy endorses the fact that we know what we're doing. So what we want to do is bring you here to Scottsdale, show you how to find the leads, talk to the leads and get the big fat juicy spreads that I know you all want to get paid. We're talking 20, 30, 40, $50,000 deals. So what I want you to do is text the number below and Andy Elliott and I, We'll be waiting for you October 25th and 26th here in Scottsdale, Arizona. Let's finally get paid what you're worth. And now back to the video. I'm going to make you feel something with me. You ain't never failed with anybody. Matter of fact, I'm pretty sure that most marriages aren't even on fire anymore. And so if I go into a relationship and I can make a husband or a wife or a family feel differently than they felt with anyone before. They'll make a decision with me. Have you ever heard that term? Have you ever made an exception just one time? It's a, it's a really good close. Somebody's like, yeah, we normally don't, you know, we usually think about things overnight before we ever make a decision. Yeah, totally understand. But have you ever made an exception just one time? Just once? Yeah, it would be for something like this. And see, you can say that when you've done everything right up to that point. But you can't say it if you haven't. See, my number one goal is that I want to make people fall in love with me. I want to to make people like want to adopt me. I want to make people like when they're with me, be like, fuck, dude, I can't be without this guy. That's my goal. Isn't that y'all's goal? Dude, if that's not your goal, you don't want to be the best. Remember what I said. I said, how much money do you want to make? Well, the amount of money, if it was a big one, you're going to want to learn more and you're going to want to be more coachable. Listen, so I would write this down. I need to shed some of the old me. Okay, Um, there's two things. Some of you need to shed and some of you need to kill the fuck off the old you. Like, you don't need to shed, you need to fucking kill. Like me, at 39, I needed to kill the old me. I didn't want to shed, I wanted to kill. And that means if if you want to create and become a new person, you just got to kill off the old you. But some of you, you're doing really good, you just need to shed a couple things. So as I'm talking, you can shed. But living for a bigger vision than yourself is huge, man. By the way, that's called purpose. Okay, I always say people don't burn out, they lose their purpose. You ever heard somebody say, I'm just burned out? Well, that means you don't have any fucking vision. You don't care about what you're doing. What you're doing doesn't mean anything. Okay, every day I wake up, man, I love making people happy. I love seeing people happy. I love seeing people believe in me. Um, I put this, so this is how you get rich. I put the greatest, the scarcest, most scarcest resource in the world 
is leadership. So if anybody wants to know how to make more money, how do you do it? You create more value. Am I right? If you want to make more money, Jordan, you have to create more value in yourself. What's the greatest resource in the world, the most scarcest resource ever? Leadership. So if you can become the leader, the leader builds more value and that means you get paid more. It's very simple. So everybody's like, we need some sales training. No, you don't. You need to become a fucking leader. And if you're a leader, you can sell anyone. If you're a leader and you're self-leading yourself, if you're a leader and you believe in yourself so much and you have this thing called, I call it moral authority, moral authority. You can walk in, you talk, you talk to somebody and they're like, I don't know why, but I fucking believe this guy. Let's do it. I just met you, but I have this gut intuition that like, I need to do what you say. It's called moral authority. It's something that people can like, they can smell it in the air. Look, people got good fucking bullshit meters, right? Okay? Yeah, so like, have moral authority. Be who the fuck you say you are. By the way, you can't give somebody something you don't have and you can't get somebody to become something you're not. Are you guys quick at making decisions? Most people aren't. I'm very quick at making decisions. The shorter the time that it takes you to make a decision, the quicker you'll grow, the more money you'll make, the more successful you'll be. And by the way, do you want your customers to make quick decisions? Yeah, yeah so be the customer you want. Hey, if you won't fucking invest in yourself and spend money, if you won't make quick decisions, if you're not willing to change and be coachable, how the hell are your customers gonna fucking change and be coachable? Physically impossible. And that's why you see all these people that are like, man, I got these objections. They don't like the way the panels look. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? They don't like you, bro. <laughs> they, they said that because they didn't want to be direct. The truth would have been, I wish we could put a truth serum in people. And you'd go through your pitch and they would say, I don't like you. And you'd be like, excuse me? And they would say, I don't like you. And you'd be like, well, that was rude. No, that's the truth. Rude would be, lying, would be me lying to you and saying I don't like the panels, the way they look. The truth would be me saying I don't like you. See, you had an opportunity to earn the right for me to like you, but when you came here, you didn't earn it. So I don't like you. I think that the truth is where all growth begins. Honesty is where change happens. If you're not getting the results you want right now, it's truly because you're not good enough. Your intentions may not be right. Maybe you have commission breath. I see a lot of salespeople that have commission breath. But the, but the most scarcest resource in the world is leadership. And that's why all this is about leadership. And I put together something. I put leadership is not a position. It's a skill of influence. So what is influencing? Influence is persuasion. Have you ever got, you guys ever heard the transfer of emotion? Take the way I feel and make somebody else feel that way? Yes. Do you know what a buying state is? Okay, so write this down real quick. Transfer of emotion is to make somebody feel the way that you feel. Okay, so if I'm selling somebody, when I show up at the front door, should I show up in a buying state? Should I show up in a good state? Should I show up in a good attitude? Should I show up in a coachable state? Should I show up speaking with somebody with familiarity like we've known each other our whole life? People are like, when you meet somebody, you gotta build rapport to tear the wall down. Hey, why don't you fucking talk to them like you know them right out the gate? They'll start talking back to you like they know you. That's the way people operate. Dude, people go in and they start shaking hands like, let's get to know each other. Look, bitch, I already fucking know you. You're a human being. You got a heart. You got a mind, right? You're good people. You use energy. You like saving money. You know inflation's real. Shit, man, we're family already. Right? Familiarity. Speak to them like you know them the second the first word comes out your mouth. I'm telling you guys, that's why when you go around and you, and you talk to people at the grocery store, right? There's this thing, and, and you can write this down. Like, there's things that I'll say write down. There's this thing called mastering a stranger. And to me, it's the most number one skill you have to have as a salesperson. The ability to master somebody. Notice, I didn't say make a friend. Okay, that's something your parents told you. I'm telling you to fucking master their ass. Okay, what does that mean? That means in the first minute or two, they're saying things like, I don't know why I'm telling you this, but... And then they say something. And you're like, I know why you're fucking telling me. Because you fucking feel comfortable with me. Yeah. I know why you're telling me. And so like when you can hear these things, like I don't know why I'm telling you this, but blah, 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 blah. You're like, okay, cool. I've done my job. I've mastered this customer. Okay? And by the way, like the, the biggest hole and the flaw in, in human beings is they just don't know how to communicate anymore. People don't know how to look at each other in the eyes. They don't know how to shake a hand. They don't even know how to talk. 
It's like you've been talking since you're one years old. And go talk to someone in the grocery store. They don't even look at you. They don't talk to you like they even give a fuck about you anymore. Dude, have you ever seen the arrogant look that people have in their faces? Like they honestly don't even care if you're alive. That's the look that I see in most of the world now. And that's the reason why everybody's broke. Okay? Because people don't like that look. You know that term, the resting bitch face? Like people have that everywhere. And it's like people will get excited if they see that you're going to buy from them. But like other than that, people won't give it. So anyways, I just put, oh, by the way, this is important. I put anything that can be learned or anything that can be taught is a skill. Um, Being a good person is a skill. Okay? Uh, Guys, working through a, talking through a conversation is a skill. Okay? Like getting somebody to, to not be angry whenever they're angry and getting them to calm down is a skill. And so if anyone can do it, it means that you can learn it. So if I can do something, if you see me do it, you should be like, I can learn that. Don't ever say, I'm not built that way. Like what? Like you don't coach? Like you don't train? You don't practice? You don't have repetition? You don't write shit down? Like what do you mean? Like everything is a skill. From the minute we're born, everything that we learn is a skill. So um, it can all be taught. It can all be learned. And if there's one human being that can do anything, you can do the same thing as them. Dude, I'm telling you, all I do is study humans all the time. And if anyone can do anything better than me, like I'm giving an example. Let's say I'm married, right? And like me and my wife, I want to get closer to her. And I look over and let's say like you guys are married, right? Okay. And let's say like Jordan's the chick, right? (laughs) And, and, And Jordan's over here and he's like holding your hand. And I'm like, oh, well, that's fucking cool. I'm like, I need to hold my wife's hand, right? But wouldn't I be an idiot to see him holding his wife's hand and be like, oh, they look close. And I'm like, I wonder how they're doing it. Well, fucking look at him. He's holding her hand. Okay, what does that mean? Hold your wife's hand. All of a sudden, you guys get closer. Okay, there you go, bud. Let's practice. (laughs) Hey, this right here, it sounds like selling, but again, this is the real skill of leadership. To influence the thoughts, the feelings, and the actions, and the beliefs of another human being is a skill of leadership, okay? This is it. It's not sales. They put all this shit in a a sales bucket. Can I ask you a question? Can you control your own mind? Can you control your own thoughts? Can you control your own feelings? Can you control your own emotions? Fuck yeah. And if you can do that to you, you can do it to someone else. Your greatest student that you'll ever get to teach is you. You're your own drill sergeant. You're your own coach. You live in your own head 24 hours a day. 25-7, 365, you live with you. So it's like, what do you want to fix? Okay, what are your problems? You know, what's your biggest downfall? By the way, self-assess. You guys need to learn. If you want to be the greatest, you have to look in the mirror and you have to own your shit. And I, I call these buckets. I make these little buckets of like, Where do I have the most room to excel in? By the way, listen, 1% better in one area could really do a lot for your life, okay? A lot of things people suck at, you could double. Like getting someone who's not good at, or getting somebody who's shy and then making them not shy anymore is like making them 300% better. But somebody that's not really good when somebody hits them with an objection at like saying something when rejection comes in, they might get 5% better in that, but that can increase sales big time because most of the time objections come after like the proposal or after a price or after we show them numbers. You know what I'm saying? Um, Anyways, to influence the thoughts, the feelings, emotions, and the actions of another person, that's leadership. The biggest challenges for business is they think they've maxed out what's possible. I'm going to tell you why you're not making more money is because truly you don't think that you can. I'm not saying that Jordan doesn't think he can. Listen, I know guys in the solar industry that make a million and a half a year. Well, Because they make a million and a half doesn't mean that you can make a million and a half. The only way you're going to make a million and a half is if you believe you can make a million and a half. They believe they could, so they did. You don't believe you can, so you can't. So notice I said they've maxed out what's possible. This is one of the biggest deals for people. Now, here's what I'll tell you. I'm going to give you a little framework. So I normally get on stage and I'll ask somebody, I'm like, I'm like, how long have you been selling solar for? Okay, one year. And I say, hey, let me ask you a question. One to ten. One being the worst, ten being the best. Where do you think you are? One to ten. How good? I'm a two. Okay, see, but you know what I was going to (laughs) say. He knows me. But most people say I'm an eight. 
and I say, oh, okay, cool. So from a one to 10, you're an eight. So pretty much you're maxed out. You don't have much room to grow. Is that right? And then they're like, no, fuck that. I can grow. And you're like, oh shit, I thought you were an eight. So are you a two then? And then once you get to your 10, you're going to fucking take over the world. Listen, your two may be better than someone else's 10, but your 10, I bet all of you are a long ways away from it. I'm a one. I'm a one. When I'm a 10, I'm taking over the world. I'm a one right now. If I made 100 million last year, that's a one. I promise you, dude. I'm learning every day that there's so much to learn. I'm learning every day how to figure out when something happens bad, how to continue to operate at even a higher level. Not the same lever, at even a higher level. Dude, there's levers that you need to learn to pull in your life that make you perform higher. There's things that you need to learn as a human being that will make you like unstoppable. Dude, human beings are resilient. It's the craziest shit I've ever seen. I mean, I'm telling you, you guys have no fucking clue. I've seen, listen, my wife, she's been, her brother was almost, almost killed three weeks ago. Dude, literally, I mean, like, we had a, he was fucking dead. He's green. And three weeks later, with my wife coaching him, helping him, being there with him nonstop, we've literally coached him back to life. He's sitting up on his own. He's fucking taking a piss. He's learning how to walk again. Dude, like he was fucking dead. You guys aren't dead. If you guys really took your life serious for three weeks, you guys could literally 5X your money. You could 5X your relationships. Dude, you could 5X you being fucking proud of you. By the way, most people think that that sounds kind of gay when people are like, oh man, you want to be proud of you? You got to like you? Motherfucker, you don't like you. You live with you. Like you live with you. You know why wives are fucking shitty to their husbands? Because they don't like them. Okay, or their husband don't like themselves, so they're fucking, they hate their husband because he can't be happy no matter what I do for him. But sometimes you can't, no one else can make you happy and you can't fucking be happy no matter what anyone else does for you. There's people that I've been around that I've tried my hardest to fucking make them happy. They just don't want to be happy here. Remember, I said your greatest responsibility, your number one responsibility is to be in control of your thoughts. Um, and I put once that happens, your belief controls you and then you miss your innovation. So innovation is the ability to scale. Innovation is the ability to see something outside the box, right? Innovation is how we built the Elliott Group. Um, you know, I fucking was sitting at a kitchen table and I was like, wouldn't it be cool if we did this? It was hard as fuck, but we were innovative. I've learned that people like, they, they, they max out in their mind what they think is possible. So um, anyways, this is all leadership, right? At the end of the day, you guys are all in charge of you. So you're all ultimately the leader of yourself, number one. If you are married, you're the leader of your home. If you have children, you're the leader of your children. At least you should be. And your children should want to look up to you as their hero, no matter how old you get. I was telling someone the other day, I said, when I'm 90 years old, when I'm 90, and my kids are 60, they're still my baby. It, it doesn't fucking matter. Like, age is irrelevant to parenting. Okay? And by the way, I want to give you a secret, okay? In my company, my, chi my, my children, which are my team, those are my kids. Their parents pass them off to me. It's my fucking responsibility to make sure that I take really good care of them. So I want you to do this. If you don't have a team and if you don't have employees that work for you, you have customers. And these customers have parents. And their parents have handed those customers off to you for you to educate them, for you to treat them well, for you to spend time with them. Imagine if you're talking to some 45-year-old adults, and after you were done talking to them, their parents would be there watching and saying, oh, kids, they treated you good. Go ahead and do it. They, they treated you right. Yeah, you should do it for sure. I want to make sure that, like, I'm taking care of people like I want people to take care of my children. Dude, this is a whole nother level of business. You want to know how, like, this is called the invisible. What I'm going over with you today is the invisible, okay? You go talk to a lot of these business owners, they got a little playbook, right? Like, oh, this is how our business works. This is our... Me? Dude, you can't fucking mock what I have. My shit is the ability, the ability to catch motherfuckers on fire. My ability is the, is the ability to hijack someone's brain because of the way that I treat them, the way that I operate, the way that I, I show them love. Dude, it's the invisible. The invisible is what makes you rich. And by the way, like the invisible is what makes you stand out in this world out there too. So, you know, if somebody walks in a room and you're like, who the fuck is that? You know why you think that? Again, moral authority. That person's doing something that you know that's right. This is a big one. I've said this a lot. There's three things you must know if you're really going to give all you got in any, in any business. Number one, right? There's treasure in my business. 
Do you guys think that there's treasure in your business, yes or no? Okay. If I knew that there were treasure in this cave, I was like, dude, I'm 100% positive there's treasure in here. The second thing I got to think is, will I find it? Dude, people that don't think they're going to find it, never find it. You got to think you're going to find it. Dude, one of the things that I know for sure is that I can close anybody, anytime, any place, any fucking where. It doesn't fucking matter. I can. I know that. That's why I close everybody. So you have to think, is there treasure in my business? Yes? Okay, cool. Will I find it? You have to think, I will find this. It's not an option. And then number three, this is a big one. Is it worth it? You got to think, if you go and you do all this work, is it worth it? Okay, are you guys in an opportunity right now where you guys have a pretty good earning potential? Yes or no? Yes. It's worth it. It's worth it. Ian was talking about the, the Uber driver and the, the cab driver. I mean, listen, man, is there treasure in his business? No. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe he wants to see people happy and get from fucking destination A to B. Okay, cool, that's treasure. Maybe he finds that treasure. B, right, will he find it? Maybe he will if he watches him, but is it worth it? If he's not working for any financial gain and he just wants to ride around in his car all day, listen to his music, maybe, maybe it's worth it to him. But I have a feeling that the people that are in this room want to put their family in a special place. My family's in a special place, okay? I knew there was treasure in my business. I knew I was going to find it and I knew it was going to be worth it. Guys, I'm going to tell you this. Your life, it's really fucking short. I know it sounds crazy. It's not negative. It's just the truth. And so the truth is, is if you really want to do something big in life, you got to wake the fuck up today. And honestly, you got to really be the, the gatekeeper to your mind. Be real careful to let somebody convince you that you don't have to wake up today, not to convince you. Um, this is a good one for me. I like to do this. So imagine this competitor, okay? I put this up here. Imagine a competitor that you'd never, notice the word never, you'd never want to go up against. This motherfucker is somebody you do not want to go against. They're focused, 25-7, 365. They're persistent, they're relentless. They're always learning, they're always improving. They say no to everything that doesn't make him stronger, okay? Do you know what he looks like? Do you know how he acts, okay? And then you know who he associates with. Now become him. That's it. Who's the person you'd never want to compete against? Write that down and then become it. Psycho competitor. Somebody that they're like, I, I, don't, want to, I don't want that guy to open up a shop across the street from my company. I don't want that. I don't want someone that wants to do everything better than we do it. I don't want that. That's who you got to become. You guys got to realize this, that look, man, the number one reason why you guys aren't where you want to be is probably because you haven't became the leader that you need to be, okay? And then I put this, are you going up against tough enough competitors? If you're not around any competition, you can never be great. I mean, imagine this, if you're a football team, you only practice as hard as the teams you're going to play, am I right? You wouldn't fucking kill yourself and go through hell week like they do in SEAL training to go against a weak ass team. But if you knew you were going to go against the toughest team ever, then you would compete. That's what we do. See, our company, we train like we're taking on the entire world. And we, we, we want to take on anybody. Like, we thrive to take on the most dangerous. Um, this is a big one. This, one. this one right here, to me, create dreams so big that they scare everyone around you. Um, when you tell somebody what your dream is, do they want to slap the fucking dog shit out of you? They better. They better say, you know what? All right, I'm done. We're not friends anymore. Now you fucking lost it. That's how big you want to go. And by the way, you can't say it. You got to believe that it can happen, okay? You got to believe that it can happen. It's just the way it works, okay? Somebody says, hey, how do you build a $100 million business? 100 people making $3,500 a day for 260 days a year is $91 million. Just back into the fucking math for a minute. Okay? How much money do you want to make in a year? How much money do you want to make? This year, 250. Okay. What's your average deal? Commission. 40, well, 4,000. Your way? Probably. Well, but, but see, you got to take probably out. So here's what I want you to do. How much money do you want to make? So anything that you want, you reverse engineer. 
Does that make sense? Dude, listen, you don't say, how am I going to get there? You go to the goal and then you fucking back into it. So if you were to say, I want to make 250 grand, I would say, okay, cool. What's the average deal? Okay. What's the average? You may say, well, some are big. Give me the fucking average though. Give me the average because averages is what we play. So you give me the average and then you figure out how many deals you have to have. And then how many of those equal 250? Like it's pretty simple, right? You guys get it? Okay, cool. So doing that math, if it's $4,000 a commission on average, right? Right? Cool. How many do you got to sell? That's all you got to do. Just take, take 250,000 divided by 4,000. Right? What is it? Yeah. How many days are you going to work this year? Five days a week? Okay, but let's say five to be safe. Let's say you want to spend some time with somebody, okay? So that's 260 days a year after you take a third of the year off. Notice, there's 365 days in a year, am I right? If he works five days a week, 52 weeks in a year, that's 260 days a year. If you take 365 minus 260 days that he's going to work, he's literally taking 105 days off. That's a third of the year off, right? Okay, are you burned out? Are you tired? No? Okay, cool. So he's getting plenty of time off, and now he's going to work, Okay? So out of 260 days, you need to sell 60 units, right? 62 units? Cool. Pretty simple math. He's got to sell one every five days. That's it. Can you sell one every five days? And he's like, oh, yeah. It's like, fuck, dude. See what I'm saying? Right? Like, you got to do the math, and you got to think, fuck, man. Dude, listen. When I was 18 years old, I made 125 grand. At 19, I made 225. At 20, I made 500 grand. I need everybody to understand this. I don't care if anyone else in the company has made it or not. Do you think you can make it? Do you have a plan in your head how it can be made? And then you can you build yourself to be the right person to go do the work? If you can, you're done. Dude, you guys look, by the way, hey, not to get rich, but if you guys want to really have a good life, two or three good years will change your whole life. Do you guys understand that? If, if he would just double his numbers and he could get a deal every, every two and a half days, that would make 500000 and make a half a million. If he could sell in solar for the next three years and make a half a million a year, that's a million and a half in three years, right? He's literally working five days a week. He's taking the weekends off. You probably don't even go hit the doors until like 11 o'clock, right? 11 to 7, 8, 9, 10 o'clock at night. You're working eight hours a day. Fuck, man, you're working banker hours, working five days a week, making a half a million a year. Hey there, sales warriors. Are you tired of facing objections left and right, struggling to close deals, and watching your competitors snatch away your prospects? Well, you're not alone. Recent surveys indicate that a whopping 72% of sales professionals struggle with handling objections, leading to missed opportunities and lost revenue. But fear not, there's a solution to this all too common problem. Enter Andy Elliott's Sales Playbook, your ultimate guide to mastering sales strategies and objection handling like a pro. Andy Elliott's Sales Playbook isn't just a collection of tips and tricks, it's a comprehensive roadmap to success packed with actionable insights and real world examples that you can start implementing right away. And here's the best part. Andy's playbook isn't just for seasoned sales veterans. Whether you're a rookie looking to kickstart your career or a seasoned pro aiming to sharpen your skills, there's something for everyone in this playbook. So if you're ready to arm yourself with the knowledge and confidence you need to crush objections, close more deals, and skyrocket your sales career, don't hesitate. Click the link below to grab your copy of Andy Elliott's Sales Playbook today. Remember, success favors the prepared. Equip yourself with the tools you need to outshine the competition and become a sales powerhouse. The time to elevate your game is now. Now let's make this your best year yet. Now let's get back to the video. Three years, you could save that money up. Now can I ask you a question? Could he go absolutely psycho and make a million a year? Of course he could. Guys, what would you guys rather do? I'm gonna ask everybody. Remember, the God of this generation is comfort. Everybody's always like, well, you know, I wanna do this and I wanna do that. Okay, cool, I love that. Sacrifice for what you want or for what you want becomes a sacrifice. What do you want right now? Listen, if you're super young, if you're, if you're 48 years old in this room and you got a wife and you got a kids, you can't do what a 22 year old does. Do you get me? But if you're 22, if you don't have a wife, if you don't have a kids, if you're 25 years old, dude, I'm gonna tell you this, you guys should be working 15, 18 hours a day. 
for the next three years, go make yourself a couple million dollars, get yourself out of fucking debt. Save up all your cash, have choices. That, I'm just telling you the truth. You live in an era, you guys are pretty unique. But anyways, create a, a, a goal so big that scares you. And by the way, I think it's important that you write this down. People won't always get their goals, but they'll always get their standards. Which is why when I say raise your standards, right? Like Tony Robbins does these like six day events that are 18 hours a day and they teach three magical words to raise your standards, three words. And so people won't always get their goals, but they'll always get their standards. So, um, and by the way, standards are something you would die for. You say die? Yeah, there's fucking like, if, if, if you had a kid in here and I said, all right, either you're gonna get your head cut off or your kid is. Every parent would say, fuck me right now. You wouldn't even think. That's a core value. That's a standard you're willing to die by. And so like, you gotta come up with these core values. If not, you're gonna walk out these doors into the world and they're gonna fucking tell you what you're gonna live by. Either you make up your mind what you wanna live by or they'll make it up for you. Does that make sense? You guys feel me? You guys see why so many people are fucking lost now. Okay, I already said this. I said the time it takes to make a decision decides the level of your success. I said when everything changes, uh, everything changes when your decision making time shortens. I said that earlier, but I believe in this one. Any time that I've ever thought this is good for me, the time that it takes me to go from here to here is the time that the next close I'm trying to put down makes that customer go from there to there. If you're like, I don't know, let me think about it. Don't be surprised when they say, I don't know, let me think about it. Dude, I really believe there's a cycle of shit that runs around in this world and the way you operate is the way they operate. By the way, you can look in people's eyes because the eyes are the window to the soul and I can look in your soul and I can tell if you're lying to me or you're telling me the truth, okay? And so that's the reason why you have to do what you're asking your customers to do, okay? Make quicker decisions. By the way, not big giant ones that can impact your whole family's life that are bad. I mean, quick, easy decisions, you know what I'm saying? Like, like they're, they're, there's like decision making like common sense, right, okay? Um, this is the big one. When I see something I want, I won't stop until I get it. If you ask any successful person how they became successful, they will tell you they did whatever it took. Listen, guys, I'm talking about fucking late nights, early mornings, days without sleep, insomnia, anxiety. You feel like you're going to die. You're not going to die. I promise you you're not going to die. But this is what it takes, is this. But now, I will tell you a secret, okay? I'm not asking you guys to give up things that are important to you. My wife and me live by a very simple standard. If you guys have watched any of our content, you'll know that I say your goal is to get it all. Don't be one dimensional. If you say, Andy, I want to get rich, okay? If you give up your health, you'll never get rich because unhealthy people don't get rich. And if they do, they end up giving it off to someone else because they'll die pretty soon. So your goal is, is that you've got to keep your health doing whatever it takes would mean you would wake up at 4.30 in the morning and go to the gym before the sun came up so you'd be in a better mood for the next 12 hours so you'd be in a better operating state. Does that make sense? So understand, do whatever it takes. There's businessmen that go, do whatever it takes means if I wake up and I fucking start working at 5 a.m., I'm going to get three more hours of work into my competition. Hey, if I go to the gym and you don't, eventually you're going to fucking break. You're going to eventually get sick at some point. You're eventually going to look in the mirror and fucking hate yourself, and you're going to suffer with depression and shit like that, and I'm not. So, like, when I say do whatever it takes, I mean wake up at 4.30. Go to the fucking gym. You know, wake up. Get your mind right. You know, eat clean food. Eat, eat clean food would do whatever it takes. Like my do whatever it takes might not be another influencer's businessman's do whatever it takes. I know a guy that worked his whole life to make X amount of money. And when he finally did, he sold his business for 150 million. And guess what? He fucking died about two years after that. Good fucking job. Good job. We told him to eat clean. We told him to work out. We told him to take good care of his family. He said, hey, when I fucking get the yacht, when I get the lake house, when I get that shit, then I'll fucking do that, all right? And then my family will know that, the, that it was worth it. Yeah, he's not even around anymore. Some other dude's fucking rolling around in his yacht with his wife and kids. I'm not even joking. Well, well someone is, right? It ain't him. So like, yeah, good job, man. Imagine if you would have just... Listen, the time was passing anyways. Imagine if he would have, watch, 
Did he eat? Yeah, he ate. What did he eat? Fucking cheeseburger, grilled chicken. He was eating anyways. What would have been the difference between a, a piece of grilled chicken or a fucking cheeseburger? I mean, I'm just a decision. No, dude, I'm too busy. It takes the same amount of time to put a piece of grilled chicken in your mouth as it does a fucking cheeseburger. There's no... As a matter of fact, meal prepping saves you more time than thinking about where am I going to eat today. Okay? Um, I put this one right here. Know who the hell you are and know your value. I, I don't know why, but I think a lot of people don't understand their value. And um, there's a lot of sayings that say you'll, you'll never out-earn your own self-worth. You'll never earn more than what you believe that you're worth. Um, at the end of the day, no one else, their thoughts of you should even matter. What do you think you're worth? And people say, I'm worth millions. Bitch, if you were worth millions, you'd have millions. <laughs> right? Hey, if, you, if anybody wanted a six-pack in this room, you would have one. Am I right? You just don't want one. You just don't. If you wanted a good marriage, would you have one? Yes, sir. You just don't want one. If you wanted one, you know how to act to have a good marriage. You just don't want one one it's like it's like it's like this is this is where like I swear to God this is how our company operates and this is how like people like get rich and by the way when I say get rich understand I'm saying I'm saying two things at, in one time have a rich life and getting rich to me is getting rich having money and being financially okay and hating who you are and hating your life is not what I mean by get rich, okay? So anyways, just know who you are. Um, if you don't know who you are, I assure you someone else will tell you who you are. And I, I'm, I'm out. Um, the last thing here before I got into sales, I put here the Eagles rebirth. Has anybody ever, has anybody ever watched this? Dude, this is fucking crazy. I'll tell you, but I'll, I'll tell you like what I would recommend you guys doing. And here's what I did. So at 39 years old, okay, so like I don't care how old you are, everybody's got an age, right? 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, it doesn't matter. There's a time where you say like I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. And like you've tried all the fucking shit and you realize nothing's going to work until you change. And so like you have to look in the mirror and you have to go through what I call like the rebirth process. And the best way for me to explain it is an eagle lives 40 years. And after 40 years, it has a choice. It either dies or it goes through a rebirth process. And you say, what the fuck's that mean? Well, it flies up to the highest mountain it can find. And literally, it beats its fucking beak. It would be like you smashing your head into a rock until it breaks it all the way off. And then it waits for it to grow back. It just sits up there and waits. It doesn't eat. It just waits for it to grow back. Then it plucks out all of its feather. It would be like you pulling your fingernails out and your toenails and pulling all the hair out of your body. And after that, it waits for it to grow back. And then it literally rips its talons out of its feet. And then after that, they grow back. And the eagle lives for another 40 years. It's a true story. You can literally go to YouTube and type in the Eagle Rebirth. And you can fucking watch it, man. And dude, when you see these eagles like beating their face against a rock, like, I'm like, I'm like, dude, one thing about humans, they hate accountability, they hate responsibility, they hate suffering, and they hate pain. And like, those are all the things that make you great. Um, remember how I told you like, this is, a good, this is a good reason why, if you want to change right now, I can tell you why you're going to be really uncomfortable, but you're going to get a biological reward. And you say, say what? A biological reward. Oxytocin, serotonin, right? Um, endorphin rushes, all these things, they come, they're chemicals that your body will give you. God made you to release all these chemicals when you do difficult and hard things. You want to feel fucking euphoric? Like walk around? There's, uh, I was telling little Jake back here, 17 year old, that's doing an intern with us. This morning we did legs in the gym. And we did a drop set, 10, 10, 10. You know, and anybody knows when you do drop sets, right? You get acid all through your legs. And it's nasty. 
like like literally your mind your your brain starts crawling and like you just want out does that make sense it's like being in a fucking electric chair and like you just want the pain to quit but stay in it and i'm counting down 10 to 1 okay drop the weight 10 to 1 and then we drop the weight again and then 10 to 1 and on that last one all that lactic acid is running through his legs and dude he wants out but I told him, I'm like, give it a minute. And all of a sudden, that pain, that nastiness, you guys all know if you work out a lot, it flipped over to pleasure. And all of a sudden, those chemicals got released in his body, and it's fucking euphoric. You start walking around, you're like, oh my God. Dude, you're like walking around on cloud nine. Like, it's, it, I mean, I don't, I'm not God, but it's a God-like feeling. And the only way to get it is to go through something really, really hard. And so I'll tell you guys, um, you should get really excited when I'm like, hey, totally recreate. Like, change your whole life. Like, change everything about you. And listen, it's going to be hard as fuck. But how do we get all this biological reward? How do we get this good shit? By doing things that are really hard. And so I told you the, the, the God of this generation is comfort. And if you do, if you chase comfort, like, man, I just want to be comfortable. Dude, you're going to be the most uncomfortable person on planet Earth. Would a mother cherish, cherish a, a child if she didn't have to go through six months of labor? Or, or nine months of labor? I'm clearly not a woman. Because she's like, no, I think it's fucking nine. Hey, but nine months of labor is why a mother loves her child more than anyone else. Okay? And then the next year fucking teaching it to eat, being with it every fucking second. It's like, that's like a bond you can't break. But it's because it's so hard. That's why they fucking love their kids so much. And so my point at being said is that the harder something is, the better. So when me and my, me and my wife get into a fight, I'm almost grateful. Because I know that any time that there's a fight, there's an opportunity for us to get closer. Um, it, on my team, I, you know, guys, I'm a loyalty freak. How do you create more loyalty? It's easy. You got to go through something hard with somebody. And so if somebody on my team is struggling and something happens and it's really bad, I'm like, fuck yeah. Not because I'm like, yeah, I'm glad something's going wrong, but I'm glad because now it's the time for me to step in and help them through this hard time because we are about to go to a new level together. That's it. Dude, that's the reason why like everybody's like, oh, it's fucking hard. And these people don't they don't understand the, the chemical release. They don't understand the value that you get out of anything. Do you guys appreciate anything easy? Dude, if you give somebody something for free, you know these little spoiled fucking kids that get everything they want? Well, look, if you walk up, my daughter, we were in a fishing village in Mexico, right? And she was carrying this little baby doll a couple years ago. My daughter was carrying it. And there was these little kids that were sitting there all covered in dirt in this fishing village. We went way out into the mountains, okay? Where we go to like, it's in, in San Carlos, right? Out, way out in the mountains. And when we go out there, you could tell these kids have no toys. And my daughter hands this other little girl, this other little girl staring at her baby doll. And my daughter just out of nowhere walks over and gives it to her. And dude, this little girl starts bawling. I told my wife, I'm like, Number one, how cool was that to see our daughter give her that? Number one, that's like, that was so cool. That was like the, the greatest thing we ever saw. But number two, I, I sat down with my kids and I was like, you see? Dude, when, I, when, when we bought you guys that toy, you didn't cry. You guys get stuff easy. These kids will never see stuff like this. So my point is with you guys is that the harder it is to get, the more you'll value it. Okay? So success is really hard. It really is. I'm going to be honest. I mean, people say it's easy, but it really is fucking hard. And the only reason why it's hard is because winners live where quitters quit. And everybody just seems to quit before they get to the winning stage. And, you know, and then plus uh, people like, so people quit could be one. Uh, people self-sabotage. It could be number two. Um, people don't believe in themselves. Number three, they just don't believe. And then number four, people are around the wrong people. Hey, what's going on y'all? I know you're getting a ton of value watching this video right now, but Andy Elliott wanted me to tell you, listen, I'm the number one wholesaling coach in the world. In October 25th and 26th, right around the corner, 
Andy Elliott and I are hosting in my brand new office in Scottsdale, Arizona, over 9,000 square feet. We're going to show you exactly how to build a seven figure wholesale operation in 12 months or less. Listen, Andy endorses the fact that we know what we're doing. So what we want to do is bring you here to Scottsdale, show you how to find the leads, talk to the leads and get the big fat juicy spreads that I know you all want to get paid. We're talking 20, 30, 40, $50,000 deals. So what I want you to do is text the number below and Andy Elliott and I will be waiting for you October 25th and 26th here in Scottsdale, Arizona. Let's finally get paid what you're worth. And now back to the video. Look, you guys will always be a product of your environment. So if you're around the wrong people, you'll always be a piece of shit. Okay. So anyways, does that help you guys with the leadership? Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's go to sales. Is that cool? Hey, we don't have to spend a lot of time together. I was telling Jordan, I was like, dude, like, I'm like, I'm just like, like, let's spend some time together. Let's grow. And then let's kind of move on. Is that cool? Okay. So I want to talk about sales for a minute. So now that you got the leadership part down, um, I have these slides. I'll send them to Jordan. Jordan, you send them to everybody. Is that cool? Okay. Um, just so you have them and you can kind of go through them later. Okay, so sales, right? So sales to me, number one, it's like people don't always remember what you, you said, but they always remember the way you made them feel, right? So like sales, like there's hundreds of micro skills when you're selling. Hands, eyes, head nods like this, right? Teeth. I like smiling with your eyes, giving them eye contact, paying attention, right? Feet, posture, right? Like posture is a big one. Like all these little things are all little micro skills. You got to make sure you're on point the whole time, okay? The way you look, you know, a lot of people don't really think about the way they look. Now, let's talk about words. The way that you play your words. Has anybody ever watched a motivational video like on YouTube or something? And you fucking watch it and you're like, God, I just want to go tear some shit up. You're like, feel really good? Well, what if a guy had the same video, but he didn't say the words just like that guy, but they were the same words, but they weren't in the same word play. They weren't played the same way. Well, you wouldn't have felt the same way about it. That's selling. The reason why you have to know what you're gonna say before you say it, and you have to know that repetition, if you're in sales, you should know what you're gonna say before you even say it. Like, like, you should never be thinking like, what the fuck am I going to say? You should already know what to say the second they say it. Why? Because people can tell if you're thinking about what you're going to say the second they tell you no or the second they have a concern. They can look in your face and they're like, oh, he's thinking. And by the way, when you think, what do you do naturally? Look away. People, they do, like, watch this. See my face? Watch this. So, Andy, wh what is your best price? So my best, oh, bitch, did you swallow? Because I ain't seen you swallow the whole fucking time, and all of a sudden I ask you what's your best price, and you start fucking swallowing on me. Does that make sense? Okay, so, so write this down. Don't do anything out of the ordinary when you're put under pressure. Okay, there's this thing in the military. It says when your back's against the wall, you fall to your lowest level of skill. And what that means is in the military, they make, they make you take your gun apart in the dark. They blindfold you, they make it and take it apart and put it back together. The reason why is because you gotta know your weapon. But what in, in sales, what's your weapon? Like your hands and you know, body language and posture, tonality is a weapon, but your words are your weapon in sales, okay? So there's this thing in sales, and if I could just teach you a couple things, I would teach you to learn a couple framing techniques that every time guarantee and ensure that the customer gives you the answer you're looking for. Okay? All right, so who in here knocks doors? Everybody? Okay? All right, so think about this. Do you knock doors? Yes. Cool, come here. Let's just role play. Well, I'm, and by the way, like, there's no right or wrong. I just want to explain what framing is. Is that cool? How long have you been selling for? Uh, just a month. Cool, one month. I know they taught you something. Am I right? Did they teach you something? Like, uh, they taught you, have you knocked a door yet? Yes. Cool, here's what we're going to do. Number one, knock, knock. And I don't want you to get nervous. Okay. You don't even have to role play it like we're live. Just tell everybody what you say when you hit the door. Is that cool? Okay. So it's not, and by the way, I don't want you to think, I don't want you to come up with something that sounds cute. I want you to say what they taught you to say. Is that cool? All right. Ready? Ready. So knock, knock. Door opens. I'm standing here. What do you say? Okay. Can I, can I say something? So I would have some slits. And I would... Whatever. Practice. Okay. Whatever. 
So I'd be like, okay. Yeah, let's do it, just like we're doing it. Knock, knock. Hey, how are you doing? How's it going, sir? Hey, have you looked into the rate hikes for, uh, you know, Unisource? No. No. Oh, you haven't? Oh, cool. So did you see that? Did you, you know it's in on your bill, right? So the bill has gone up by 12% last year, and they're proposing a 12% increase this year again. Have you uh, realized it? Have you? I don't pay attention to it. My wife does that. Oh, okay. So is she talking much about it? Is she no, she hasn't because... said nothing. Okay, so. How many times have I said no? Oh. Everything's been a no. Yeah. Listen, number one, you ain't done anything wrong. And by the way, I'm not telling him that what he's doing isn't going to work. I want to be the fucking best. So to be the best, there's this thing that I say, it's called being a master communicator. And a master communicator makes it easy to say yes to. What do I need? I need fucking yeses. I need this guy. I'm not playing the yes ladder. I need 63 yeses before I ask for the sale. That's not what I'm doing. I'm saying I need him to say yes to my shit, right? I should never ask him a question, right? Now, I, I, I could be like, you know, do you want your utility bill to go up? No. Well, that could be a good no, right? But at the end of the day, I want him to say yes to the things that I'm going to bring to the table. Does that make sense? Okay, so number one, we gotta make it easy to say yes to. Number two, we gotta make it hard to say no to. I need to make it where he cannot say no to anything that I'm saying. What is that called? Framing. The words that I say will frame him to give me the answer that I want so I can end up with that fucking utility bill in my hand in about a minute. Am I right? Okay, can you get every person at every house to give you their utility bill, yes or no? See, that's the problem, number one, here. He should say, fuck yeah, I can. If I was good enough, I could. Am I right? Right. Okay, good, that's the mind. That was the beginning of this, the mind, here. If I say, can you get everybody to give it to you? If they open the door, bet your ass that, that I can get it. Listen to me. When I sold cars, and I'm going back to when I was a kid, but when I sold cars, if I could, if I could get on the phone with you or if I could shake your hand, you were finished. It didn't matter. I didn't care. I, l listen. They, so I was a kid, and I'm going to go back to saying why I would, and I'll tell you how I'd frame them. When I was a kid, I was making, you know, 50 sales a month selling cars, and the average kid was making eight. And at 21, 22, 23 years old, they start begging me to become a closer, right? Like you guys have said are closers. We had salespeople that would go in to try to close deals, and then customers would blow out. Anybody ever got up and walked out of a car dealership before? I'm sure most of you are like, fuck yeah, I did. Yeah, what happens? They show you some shitty numbers for your trade, price is too high on the car, monthly payments way too big, interest rates too high, and then what do you do? You get up and you start walking out. Am I right? That's when they called me. So I was on this mile of cars, right? It was a whole mile and I had a golf cart and back in the old day there was this thing called a Nextel radio. And it would go and it would be like GMC building, old lady, white hair, yellow purse. And that's all I fucking got. And I'd get in my golf cart, and I was 23 years old, and I had a suit and a tie. And I'd go, boom, and I'd shoot down there, and I'd be like, hey, how you doing? Andy Elliott, I'm the, do I'm the deal coordinator. My job's to help coordinate the deal. Come here, I wanna show you something real quick. And then bam, I'd sit him down. I didn't know nothing. I didn't know the interest rate, didn't know the price, didn't know the payment, didn't know the fucking trade. Don't know nothing. You know what I know? They're blowing out. I'd take the piece of paper, bam, turn it around, and I had to start framing them. Does that make sense? Two minutes later, I'd walk in the office and I'd say, write it up, she's done. And then I'd go back to the golf cart and then fucking shoot down the other way. <laughs> and I would go up and down, people telling me no. And so what did I have to get good at? I had to get good at framing people really fast. By the way, there's, there's, there's order takers. What are order takers? People that are fucking handing out business cards, knocking doors, okay? They're order takers. They're not even salespeople, they're just fucking order takers. They have no idea what they're doing. So there's order takers, there's salesmen. Order takers and tour guides, right? Salesmen. The salesmen know how to sell, but they can't close fucking anything. And then there's closers, but closers can close, but they can't close for all the money. So they're always coming down, always fucking giving away everything they can. And then you got master closers. Master closers can walk into any conversation and they can close anybody down. And by the way, they make a best friend within 30 seconds. They start talking to people like we know each other their whole life. Dude, the way that they talk to you when they're around you, it's like you, you can't help but laugh with them a little bit, right? Like they're cool. Like you can be mad. They ain't mad. 
You can get angry and yell and they just laugh and say you're amazing. They, they love you. Appreciate it. Come on over here. I'm going to show you. We got something special for you. Today's going to be your birthday. Come here. I got something for you. It's like, they're like, what the fuck, man? And then you end up fucking sitting down. Next thing you know, you're inking up. That's what a master closer is. But, but the trick is they're communicators. They're very good at communicating. So I know you're new, but watch this. You got to make it easy to say yes to, hard to say no to, and you got to make it the client's idea. If you don't make it the client's idea, hey, if I told you to go to the gym and work out right now, most of you wouldn't. But if it was your idea to go, you'd go right now. Got to make it their idea, okay? All right, have a seat. How long have you been selling for? Uh, four months. Four months? Do you know your script? But you just show up and you fucking say something different every time? Uh, I kind of say the same. It just depends. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, listen. Because, because my point is, is that, look, okay, if you're going to go ask a girl out, right, wouldn't you want to know one line that they say yes to every time? Wouldn't you want to know? Of course. Okay. Well, imagine if every time you saw a hot chick, you walked up and you're like, fuck, what am I going to say? And then you would be like, fuck, I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> and then... You're like blowing all these, these deals because you don't know what to say. Come here. Don't, don't resist the stage. All right. So here we go. I'm going to have him, I'm gonna have him just he, tell me what he says. Is that cool? Okay. You ready? Knock, knock. Go. Hey, how you doing today, sir? Good. Good. Yeah. Um, I'll, uh, okay. I'll be like, okay, I like try to relate on them, relate to them or something. Bro, or something. don't tell me what you're doing. Just all tell right. me what you say. Ready? Go. Knock, knock. Hey, how you doing today? Good. Good. Um. Yeah, I'm just out here right now. Um, did you notice the rate hikes going up on your utility bill at all? No. Oh, you haven't looked at that? Okay, well, um, I'm with a company called Magawatts. So they've, they've allocated us to this area right now because of that and because of the rate hikes and everything like that. So you haven't looked into that at all? Or you already anything? asked me the same question twice. Yeah. You want me to answer it differently? Yeah, um, I'm getting froze right now. No, you're not. <laughs> Watch, are you ready? Yeah. What's your name? Maurice. What's your last name? Jones. What's your address? 15908 Main Street. What's your date of birth? 04211990. What's your mom's name? Tony Coffin. If I ask him anything that he knows, he doesn't get nervous. He doesn't know his job. I could ask you any question you know and you don't get nervous. Your goal is to know your script like you know your name. Your goal is to say your script so many times that like like you don't even Think. It's like, what's your, what, do you guys know your social security number? Yeah. Yeah. Like, do you have to fucking think or could you just spit it out? You just spit it out. Okay? So, like, that's the goal. So, if we're going to knock on someone's door, right? The number one goal is when they open the door, we know that they don't want us to be there. Would you agree? Sure. Like, don't they, they, you guys, like, they don't want you to be there. So, my goal, there's a, there's a, there's a I'm going to give you a way that I frame everything. Number one, how to get your point across in 30 seconds or less. If I can do my job in under 30 seconds, I have my best chance. Does that make sense? I increase the odds by getting my point across in 30 seconds or less. So, number one, no stuttering. No ums, no ahs. No fucking ums, no ahs. Listen to me. You're expecting me to spend money with you. You're expecting me to go from here to here. You're expecting me to give you my utility bill, and you're saying ums and ahs, and you can't look at me in the eye? No fucking way. Look. If you want to get every single utility bill, every single one of them, if you want to get every person to say yes to you, number one, when they open the door, you got to wave at them like you've known them. Don't fucking shake their hand. Don't reach out to grab their hand. That comes after they say yes. Okay? So it would kind of go like this. If I knock on the door and they open it, I say, hey guys, how you doing? I put my hand on my heart. Why? Fucking American, baby. <laughs> this is fucking America. Hey, I'm Andy. How you doing? Listen, be loving. You know them, right? So I'm sitting here like this. They open the door. As soon as they open, kind of lean over like you know them, right? Hey, guys, how you doing? Hey, my name's Andy Elliott. Is it, is it Megawatts? Hey, my name's Andy Elliott with Megawatts. My company's been allocated to this area because in the next 12 to 18 months, utility bills are going to double or triple. Listen, I got two quick questions, and then I'll be on my way unless you'd like some additional information. Is that fair? Is that fair? That's fucking fair. That's it. That's all. That's the deal. So they knock on the door. Boom, boom. They open the door. When they open it, wave at them. Hey, how are you doing? 
My name is Andy, I'm with Megawatts. Our company has been allocated to this area, to this zip code, to this community, because research shows what we've learned is that in the next 12 to 18 months, utility bills are gonna double or triple. Listen, I got two quick questions, and then I'll be on my way, and unless you'd like some additional information. Is that fair? Yes. Okay, awesome. Question number one, do you believe that you'll use energy all the days of your life? You see the lights, everything you're running your house on? Do you believe you always use energy, or do you ever see yourself running your house off candles? <laughs> Probably not, right? So you always need to use energy. No, question number two, do you believe inflation is real? Do you think things are costing more money, yes or no? Awesome, well since you answered yes to the first two questions, I have another question. If your utility bill was a double or triple, you'd have to pay it or else they'd turn your energy off. Let me ask you a question. If there was a secondary energy option in which you could qualify for that could save you money and allow you to be inflation proof, would you wanna know about it? Yeah, how are you doing? My name's Andy Elliott. I'm here with Megawatts. My job is to get the information from the people who have it to the people who need it, which is you, the homeowner. All I need to do is get a quick copy of your utility bill. If I can check out it, I'll let you know if you qualify, what the savings looks like. It'll only take me a couple minutes. Is that fair? Yeah. Boom. Oh, yeah. I'm in. Watch. Watch. What's my name? Andy Elliott. Okay. What's my mom's name? What's my date of birth? What's my social? What's my, what's my kids' name? What's everything? Hey, guys, what's going on? My name's Andy with Megawatts. My company's been allocated to this area because what? Because research shows, or I could say what we've learned. I could say what we've learned. But I like research shows because it sounds like fucking we did some research and shit, right? <laughs> we ain't done any research. I did the research, right? I say research shows in the next 12 to 18 months, utility bills are going to double or triple. Listen, I got two quick questions and I hold up two. So they know that there's two quick questions and then I point like, and then I'll be on my way unless you'd like some additional information. Does that sound fair? Okay, this is where the body language comes in, right? And by the way, when you get so good and you're the fucking best, you can walk up and say, blah, 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 and people just fucking give you their utility bill because that's how good you are, am I right? But if you're not that good yet, you can't fucking do it. Look, I've got guys that work in my company and I have to tell them exactly what to say or it doesn't work. Me, I just get on the phone and I just say whatever I want and it works. Because I've done it so long, I'm, I'm, I'm so good at it, I just make it work. But when you're in the beginning, right? Number one, you want your customers to be certain that you have the solution to fix their problem. Who must have a massive amount of certainty? Okay, how the fuck can you be confident in something you don't have memorized? How can you be confident in something you don't have memorized? How can you be confident in something that's new to you? You can't be. So like in the beginning, I don't know what y'all script is, okay? Really, I don't even care. You could say a different script and it would work just as well as long as you believe in yourself. The reason why my shit works is because I make people say yes. So remember I said make it easy to say yes to, make it hard to say no to, and make it the client's idea. So I say, I say, hey guys, what's going on? I said, my name's Andy Elliott. Put my hand over my heart like it's a pledge of allegiance, right? Hey, show them that you're a good person. How do they know you're a good person? By the way you carry yourself. There's a thing called character, right? Hey, we all have different characters, right? I'm a different character than you are. But when I show up on their door, I'm gonna show up as a cool character, okay? And by the way, you notice I do this with my head a lot and, I kinda, and I'm cool? I want people to know that like, this is fucking cool. Like, hey, I always say this to my team. I'm like, no big deal. So like, if you show up to their porch, like it's a fucking big deal. Like you're weirded out or like you're nervous. Like, fuck, you're making me fucking nervous. He's, he was making me nervous, right? <laughs> I was froze. <laughs> no, I know, but, 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 but my point is you're only froze though because you haven't done enough training. Okay, this is crazy. If you had the opportunity to earn a million dollars a year, what would you do? You have the opportunity to earn a million a year and you're not training. Hey there, sales warriors. Are you tired of facing objections left and right, struggling to close deals, and watching your competitors snatch away your prospects? Well, you're not alone. Recent surveys indicate that a whopping 72% of sales professionals struggle with handling objections, leading to missed opportunities and lost revenue. But fear not, there's a solution to this all too common problem. Enter Andy Elliott's Sales Playbook, your ultimate guide to mastering sales strategies and objection handling like a pro. 
Andy Elliott's sales playbook isn't just a collection of tips and tricks, it's a comprehensive roadmap to success packed with actionable insights and real world examples that you can start implementing right away. And here's the best part. Andy's playbook isn't just for seasoned sales veterans. Whether you're a rookie looking to kickstart your career or a seasoned pro aiming to sharpen your skills, there's something for everyone in this playbook. So if you're ready to arm yourself with the knowledge and confidence you need to crush objections, close more deals, and skyrocket your sales career, don't hesitate. Click the link below to grab your copy of Andy Elliott's sales playbook today. Remember, success favors the prepared. Equip yourself with the tools you need to outshine the competition and become a sales powerhouse. The time to elevate your game is now. Now let's make this your best year yet. Now let's get back to the video. There's this thing that says, be careful what you ask for. Okay, because a lot of people are like, I want to get rich. No, you fucking don't. You could get rich right now. Look, look, when I was in the automotive space, everybody was making 100,000 in their best year and I was making like seven, 800,000. Okay, like I, we had a $100 commission, sometimes 500. You fuckers get like 10 grand commission sometimes and shit. That's why they're yeah, it's like, but it's like, it's like, are you fucking kidding me? If I could have made 10 grand commissions, I would have smoked everyone's ass. I mean it. I'm not even joking. Ian and Evan, we're lucky we started this before solar existed. Okay? Now listen, I want to tell you guys something, all right? Number one, is it doing the right thing to get people to convert over to solar? Yes. Forget about sales. Forget about the cool closer shit for a minute. Is it good for a client to switch over to solar? Yes. Okay, when gas was a dollar, it went to six. It hurt a lot of people. It hurt a lot of people. There was no government assistant programs or anything to help any fucking person when gas prices went up. People had cars. They had to have gas. A lot of people fucking lost their jobs. A lot of people repoed their cars. If there would have been some way that people could have signed an agreement, put something in place where they could have said, you know what, I'll, I'll pay two and a half dollars for gas. I'll pay that the rest of my life. I'm in. No matter what it goes to, lock me in. They would have all paid it. But they didn't give anyone the option to do that. You guys right now are giving people the, op on the opportunity on a product that they're going to pay for until they die. They're going to pay for energy until they die. I'll bet in five or six years, I'll bet, I'll bet they fucking lock a lot of people in with electricity. Solar's non-existent. The people that have it, have it, and the rest have to get fucked and pay what they have to pay. Because they make a lot of money with it. They don't do, listen, I'm telling you guys, there's changes that are going to come and I don't know them. But what I do know is that you guys are in a little bubble right now, okay? And this little bubble can make you millions of dollars. The question is, if you were going to go work on Wall Street, would you learn everything you could about stocks and prices and investments and all this shit? When you talk to a doctor about investing his money, wouldn't you want to sound extra fucking sharp? How do we sound? Like idiots. I'm not being disrespectful, but we sound stupid. I, I don't know why... If you were on Wall Street, you would wear a suit and learn everything, but if you're in solar, you wouldn't learn everything and take your job serious. It's like this, it's like this mind shift. You know what I think it is, honestly? I think that everybody thinks solar's a fucking joke. And I'm not saying this disrespectfully to any of you guys, I love solar. But I've seen a lot of people start solar and their family's like, you're selling solar? Like, you mean knocking on doors and shit? <laughs> when are you gonna get a real job? Am I right? If I had a dollar. That's why you guys, listen, when I started my coaching company, my dad goes, you're going to start a training program, training car salesmen, how to make money. Don't quit your job. First thing they said, and then Tony Robbins just says in front of a million people, this guy right here, got tired of selling cars and decided to start helping car salesmen make money and now he's running making 100 million a year. My family still don't care. They still don't understand. They still don't get the Ferraris, the Lambos, the G-Wagons, the fucking paid off houses, the fucking all the shit, the vacations. The, they don't get it. They'll never get it. They're born into a fucking limited mindset and no I could wave millions in front of their face, they wouldn't believe it. They, they don't, they can't get it. And, and you know what's even worse is that it's not that they can't get it, they can't get it for me. 
See, everybody labeled me and put me in a box and goes, that guy will do that and he'll never go outside of this. And then when I broke out of that fucker, guess what they did? They were like, oh, fuck him now. He's got to be doing something illegal, something wrong, something, something messed up. He, he's, he's a bad person now. Something's going on. That isn't right. They don't get it. What people don't understand scares them. You know what I'm saying? Like people say like money is the root of all evil. No, it's not. Money helps a lot of people. I'd like to see my wife's brother, when he died, we spent a half a million dollars keeping him alive. So like if we wouldn't have made any money, he'd be fucking dead. Okay. So like, I just want to tell you guys that I think if you're in solar, the reason why you're not rich is because you're, you're still thinking about what everyone else said about you and what they said about your business. So, so you got to do me a favor. Remember I said, you're the gatekeeper to your mind. You're the gatekeeper. So you got to take control of your mind and you got to say, you know what? Fuck this. I'm going to take that crazy guy, Andy. And by the way, you don't need to be like me, but you need to instill and adopt the way that I think. Hijack my thinking, take it and just borrow it for the next 100 days. And every door you knock on, think if everybody, everybody can buy, came to buy and will buy as long as I do my job. Pretty simple. Everybody's door that I knock on, I'm going to sound so good that they can't help but to want me to help them. That's how good I'm going to sound. I want to sound so good that other solar companies are literally hiding out behind mailboxes just listening because they're like, what is he saying? That's what I want. And I want you to know that exactly the way that we sound right now, which is Amateur City, is the way that all these other solar companies sound. So like, like don't get mad at yourself. Be like, oh, fuck. So if everyone sucks, all we got to do is train. And by the way, you don't need to have a role play partner to train, although it does help. Let me tell you how I would train. So if I was you, right, I would literally write out the script. Okay. So I got a spiral notebook here. I'd write, what's your name? Reese. Reese. I'd put, hi, my name is Reese with megawatts. My company has been allocated to this area because research shows in the next 12 to 18 months, utility bills are going to double or triple. I got two quick questions, then I'll be on my way unless you'd like some additional information. Does that sound fair? Dot, 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 question mark. Write it down. Now, tear it out, put it right here. Write it, write it again. Write it again. Write it again. I know, you're getting tired of it. Write it again. Write it again. Write it again. Write it again. Wait a minute. Your fucking brain skips ahead and says, I know this now. And you're like, okay. Then you say, hi, my name's Reese. My company's been allocated. This. Okay, I got this down. Okay, cool. Where's the fucking mirror? And then I go to a mirror, right? And I look in the mirror and I look at myself. And then what do I do? Then I, then I got to move in the hand gestures, right? So remember, you got the language, you got body language. And then you got tonality, right? Tonality, no big deal, right? Like my job is to get the information from the people who have it to the people who need it. That's all our job is. What is your job? What's your job? Get the information out. No, no. Oh. <laughs> Reese, say my job. My job. Is to get the information. Is to get, is to get the information. From the people who have it. From the people who have it. Which is us. Which is us. To the people who need it. To the people who need it. Which is you, the homeowners. Which is you, the homeowners. That's fucking simple. That's my yeah. job. Yeah. That's, that's your job. Do you guys get it? Yeah. So Reese is showing up, and if somebody's like, oh, I'm not interested, and you're like, guys, my job is to get the information from the people who have it to the people who need it. That's it. Listen, by the way, and I'm not, I'm not a part of your company, but I would have a fucking form. If somebody rejected me, I'd have a form that they'd have to sign saying that they don't want to hear the information, so in case the grid gets maxed out and they want it later, we know that they declined hearing about it. <laughs> Dude, I'd, I'd make a sheet, and it, it, it would put, and it would put, I forfeit solar options. And it would put forfeit real big at the top. <laughs> and they'd be like, no, they'd be like, oh, well, listen, it's, 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 it's nothing illegal. It's just a piece of paper. And it just says, I forfeit that I don't want to hear about it. And then when I'm done, I can fucking throw it in the trash. Who cares? But people won't want to sign it. They're like, I'm not signing that. Well, then I have to either tell you or you have to sign it, which basically means you forfeit that you don't want to hear the information. Does that make sense? Look, the government's giving big tax credits. The grid's about to max out. You know what I'm saying? So when it maxes out, your utility bill's going to triple. Energy's going to go up. You're going to be like, wait a minute, I want solar. And they're going to say, well, we brought someone by your house to tell you about it. 
but you didn't want to hear it. Remember that piece of paper he signed? So like, like, let me tell you at least, and then you can say no once you've understood it, or just sign this and I'll move on. It's totally okay. Lots of people in this area want to save. Yeah, it's like my job is to get the information from the people to have it. I'm not trying to sell you anything. Matter of fact, you're already using it. <laughs> There's nothing to sell you. You're already using energy. So like, I'm just going to walk out of here and you're going to keep using it, except you're going to pay more. Like, that's all I'm doing. If there was a secondary energy option in which you qualified for, would you want to know about it? I'm not asking you to, do, to make a decision today. I'm saying, would you want to know about it? Would you? Of course. Yeah, that's why I'm here. It's like, that's the fucking edge. Do you get it? Okay? So my point is, is that when you go to their house and you're talking to them, you got, you got to have body language. So I would, I would write it down on a notebook. Probably 10, 15 times is how many times going to write it down. By the way, after he writes it down 10 or 15 times, then he goes to the mirror and you say, hey, how you doing? And then you got to fucking smile, right? Right? You got you, you to be in a good state and you got to wave. And, and by the way, like you, how you practice is how you play. Do you think Kobe Bryant like just waited to game day and then he played really hard? Or do you think that motherfucker really played in practice as hard as he did in games? I'm willing to bet that when he practiced, he practiced really hard. And so what's up with this fucking pussy ass, like, like weak ass fucking training? It's like everybody's like, yeah, you know, it's like, is that how you do it? No, we have our hands out like this. Okay, are you confident at their door? Cool, Con be confident during training. Dude, when we're training, I want you to fucking look at me and go, fuck, I want to I spend some money even though we're role playing. Like my role play partner makes me want to spend money. Okay? But if you can do it in the mirror though, okay? And by the way, listen to me. You got to understand this. Tell me what, let's play this out. Is that cool? Yeah. You take this serious, the training I just gave you today, you become a multimillionaire. Let's play this out. You don't fucking pay attention today. You stay the same. Let's play that out. Nothing. Your life will look the same for a very long time. Guys, there's these people that in life you guys see and you get a chance to get close to. And I'm not anything special. I'm just living proof that what I'm telling you works. And when they tell you what they're doing, you either fucking immerse in the same thing that they did and then you get what they got or you go, I don't know. I think there's another way and you stay the same. And I'm telling you, I'm really good at sales. And why I'm really good at sales is because I'm a really good leader. And all the stuff that I taught you guys with, with the leadership stuff, when I go to someone's door, I'm like, dude, I know everybody needs a good buddy in their life. And that's going to be me. Everybody is one person away from making another decision. And that next person is going to be me. These people already use electricity. So you don't have to convince them to use electricity. You don't have to convince them to, to use power. They're already paying for it. They're already using it. All we have to say is there's a, and see, I like saying secondary energy option. You guys choose your words, but like, I don't, I don't want to go too early in on the solar deal, right? I don't want to say, well, guys, well, solar is amazing. No, well, then people are like, oh, wait a minute, I don't understand it. I'm just saying, listen, if there was a secondary energy option in which you qualified for that would allow you to be inflation-proof and save money, would you want to know about it? Yeah? Okay, cool. Hey, and by the way, my name's Andy Alley. Boom, that's when I'm going to go in. See this? This handshake, well, I know, but this handshake can't happen when they open the door. If they open the door and you're like, how are you doing? Don't fucking do that. Listen, okay, you know how you hook a crackhead? You give them just a little bit of crack. And then you can go sell them a fucking whole case of the shit. You just give them a little bit. You got to give them a taste, right? You got to give them a little taste. Utility bills are going to double or triple, right? Hey, by the way, let's, let, let, let's add this last little part. When I say, what's going on? Hey, my name's Andy Elliott. My company's been allocated to this area because research shows. Can I ask you a question? When I say the word allocated, can you guys make it seem like you've been fucking brought in by like a special agency because like this fucking area is like under attack with utility bills? Don't say, listen, if I say, hey, have you seen your utility bill go up? Hey, hey, do you know how much gas is per gallon right now? Do you know? But you put gas in your car, right? How fucking stupid is it that we're asking people, have you seen your utility bill go up? And they're like, well, I don't know. You fucking put gas in your car this week, didn't you? I bet you didn't look at the sign, did you? 
Here we are not fucking paying attention and we're asking people if they're paying attention. Dude, don't do it. It's a death trap because watch, every time that the deal doesn't go in your direction, it makes you feel like, ooh, like it's not going smooth. It's like, it's like you're going around the bases. You know what I'm saying? You should, you should run around the bases nice and smooth, okay? Some of you guys aren't going nice and smooth around the bases. So like, don't ask them if they saw their fucking utility bill. Frame them and, hey, listen, would you guys rather ask people if they've noticed something or would you rather tell them that something's coming? coming. Right, because then they, they can't say, oh, I can't, wait, I don't, I don't think anything's coming. Bullshit. Everybody knows fucking shit's getting expensive. They're not going to argue with you. And by the way, when you say research shows, it makes it sound like there's some fucking data. <laughs> and, and there is data that inflation is real, right? Okay, like, I mean, I mean, look, dude, I mean, just MSRPs on cars have gone up 15,000 in the last two years. So if you don't think customers are fucking aware that shit's costing more money, you're an idiot. Okay? So when you say, guys, research shows that in the next 12 to 15 months, 12 to 18 months, utility bills are going to double or triple, that's why we're here. And then when you say, I got two quick questions, and then I'll be on my way unless you'd like some additional information. And you got to do this. Say this. Say, does that sound fair? Does that sound fair? Does that sound fair? Put your hand out like that. Does that, that sound, sound fair? fair? Yeah, yeah, like that. Does that sound fair? Does that yeah, sound fair? yeah. You fucking shake your head until they fucking nod back. You do that. I'm not even joking. People are like, that sounds weird. No, it doesn't. That's what salespeople do. That's why I can get what I want out of anyone because people mirror me. And you may say, I don't mirror people. Yeah, they do. They mirror you. I'm sorry. I do it every day for a living and I make people do exactly what I'm fucking doing. Okay? And you say, well, that's stupid. I wouldn't fall for that. Okay. There's one person out there that's like, nobody's going to fucking get into my, my, my head. Okay, cool. Love you. Have a blessed day. I'm going to the next house. Hey, guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918-210-0254. 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. Okay? Boom. It's going to work there. Does that make sense? Guys, listen, I got some magic tricks. It doesn't work with every person. There are some people that are ultra cold that won't, they don't care about anything. They don't care about their own life. They don't care about, hey, maybe somebody had a really bad day. You know, fucking dog just died today. And here I am at their door fucking talking about energy. And then they're like, I'm not interested. Get out of here. It's like, cool. Hey, I'm, maybe their dog died. Let's go to the next fucking house. It's no big deal. Like, don't take shit personal. What I want you to take personal, though, is how good your skill is. What I want you to take personal is that when you're talking to somebody, can, can you guys walk up to anyone's house and you're like, when you see that door, you're like, like, I'm going to fucking shut this shit down. This bitch is going down. And you know, when you walk up to that door, that shit's going down. Dude, listen, they open that door, it doesn't matter. You don't care. And by the way, <laughs> no big deal. You're so happy. I, I got this laughing deal I always do. Like, hey guys, how you doing today? It's like, I'm just kind of like playful joking around. Dude, you gotta be willing to get into like, like a cool state, right? Cause they don't know who you are, man. And there's a lot of weird people out there. You know what I'm saying? So like, you gotta show up and show them you're not weird. And dude, listen to me. Like when we're role playing and we're training like this, I know it seems kind of cheesy and it seems quirky. Guys, this is sales training. This is how sales works. And you get good here doing this, so when you're out there, you know, in the book Relentless, it, uh, it talked about Kobe Bryant being a cleaner, right? And it talked, and Michael Jordan, and it talked about when there was two points, or two seconds left on the clock, or one second left, and they would go to the huddle, right? The conversation was like this, give me the fucking ball. That was, that was what they said. These guys would just, their team would be there. And they're team players. But they know they have to score. So they would say, give me the fucking ball. And that's internally how confident you have to be in your skill. That every time you're going to someone's door, you're like, give me the fucking ball. They open the door. Hey, guys, how you doing? It's like you're in your zone. Hey, souls have to connect. Your ability to look into someone's eyes, just calm them down. Your ability to earn the right for 30 more seconds, right? 
Your ability to use your hands and make someone seem like it's not a big deal, right? By the way you talk to them, by the way you're laughing around a little bit, like that stuff is all needed. There's this initial process that people naturally have a guard. If you can just make it through the guard, it's over. That's all you gotta do. But your shit's gotta make sense as you're making your way through the guard. So we'll finish on this last things, on this last part here. What you say has to logically make sense. Am I right? Okay. And then secondly, they've got to feel like in their gut feeling that like they want to do business with you. I would say people make decisions logically and then they make decisions with their gut. Their gut needs to say, I like you. And then logically they need to say, yeah, what he said makes sense. You know what I mean? And that's it. And so anyways, Look, dude, I, I, I've never sold a solar panel before, okay? And you say, well, why would you tell how, well, fuck, dude, listen to me. I mean, like, sales is sales. Closing is closing. Business is business. If I can scale my business, I can scale that business. If I can grow this person, I can grow that person, okay? I'm going to say one more secret because this is a big one that, like, w when I was asking him, I said, do you think you can close everyone at every door? Remember that? And he was like, uh, I don't really know. So there's this thing where when I was, a, when I was, in, I was the closer, right? Um, salespeople wanted to tell me about the person before I would go in to close it. Does that make sense? Um, let's say you're going to go in and close behind me, okay? And I'm like, okay, listen, before you go in there, I want you to know he has to talk to his wife. Okay, and he doesn't like salespeople. Okay, and don't look at his dog, right? <laughs> Whatever you do, don't look at his dog. And listen, he hates blue. It's like, what the fuck are you talking about? It's like they want to try to tell you, like, they want to tell you everything why they won't do it, right? So, so when I would go down to close these deals, I would literally be like, hey, where are they at? Like, where are the fucking people at? And they'd be like, oh, they're over there. But they're like, let me tell you about it. And I'd be like, shut your fucking mouth. Where are they at? And I would walk over and I would just get knee to knee with them. And I'd be like, hey guys, come here. And I would just fucking start talking to them. And I would close them every fucking time. And I would walk back over and I'd be like, hey, write it up. And they're like, where'd you close them? And I was like, fucking 900 a month, what it says on the paper. And they're like, he said he wasn't going over 400. And I'm like, yeah, that's with you. They don't fucking like you. They didn't like communicating with you. They didn't want to work through a problem with you. They didn't want to spend any time with you. They didn't want to hang out with you. They don't look up to you. You're not their mentor. You didn't sound attractive. You didn't look like you gave a fuck. Like all those things were in the fucking trash can. And so like all those things that you were saying were wrong about them, those things were fucking wrong with you. Do listen, you can, you can talk to a customer and you can see everything that's wrong or you can see everything that's right. So I'm going to go a little bit deeper, but when I talk to someone, most of the time I'm like, hey, this motherfucker hadn't had anyone be really nice to him in a long time. Now I'm going to be really fucking nice to him. I'm going to connect with this person unlike anyone else that's ever connected with him. I'm going to laugh with him. I'm going to take him to a new level. I'm going to become his buddy. Dude, that's what we do. Remember, transactional is like no relationship. Relational is like how people say, well, I'll make an exception just one time to do this right now. If people say, well, if, if, and by the way, this is when you know when you're good. Remember they say like, you know, you know, like, I can't, I don't know why I'm telling you this. Or people say, I normally don't do this, but you know, it's like, I know, I know you know, I know you don't, but it's all good. We got you. It's like, but they say, I normally don't do this. That means that you've done a better job than everyone else. Okay. And so anyways, man, look, look, leadership first. Okay. I went through it. I'll send you the slides, share them with everybody. And then sales. Okay? Know what you're going to say before you have to say it. You know, believe in yourself. You know, be, be fucking good at what you do. And uh, it, this business can pay you guys all a million dollars a year. It can. And it will. It will pay you. It, it's real money. I mean, I have friends that are making it. I mean, and maybe some of you guys are making it. I, I didn't really ask any questions. But if you're not making it, what I'll tell you is everybody's qualified to make it. Um, all you have to do is train. That's it. Um, and you may say, well, I don't have anybody to train with. That's a fucking excuse. Get a spiral notebook, write down the scripts as many times as possible, um, and then go say it in the mirror. 
uh, record yourself doing it, bring it to a buddy and be like, hey man, check out my script. And like, what do you think? And he's like, yeah, fucking good job, dude. It's like, okay, cool. Hey, come watch me hit this door and I want you to fucking see how I do this. See, see what you think. Tell me what, tell me what you think I could do better after you watch me. I just, I just become obsessed like Kobe Bryant did with basketball. You become that way with sales. And listen, learn some new language, okay? Like I'm coming to you today and I asked him, I'm like, what's your script? And, and then I noticed he kind of said the same thing. And I'm like, what if this is an industry script and you guys are all saying the same fucking thing? Like if he hits a door, let's say there's like three companies in the room and he hits the door at fucking 9 a.m. and Betsy answers and says the same fucking thing he says. And then at one, this motherfucker shows up and says the same fucking thing he said at 9 a.m. And then he shows up and he's the big daddy fucking closer and he says the same thing at 6.30. It's like, you guys all sound the fucking same. And so like, that's why I like change my script in the industry so that like no one else can sound like me. And so anyway, so like me, like giving you guys some new language, like, you know, hey, my job is to get the information from the people who have it to the people who need it, which is you, the homeowners, okay? And I'm like, if there was a secondary energy option in which you qualified for, you'd want to know about it, right? Cool. That's all, that's all my job is. That's what I'm here to do today. That's it. Okay? And by the way, like you're just taking them slowly through the process so that you can close them. And look, you guys all will close differently, okay? But each one of us, our words are God-like. When we speak, people should be able to envision in their imagination without eyes, they can see what it is that we're saying because of the way that we speak to them. And so your words gotta be really good. Your body language has gotta be really good. They know what bad people look like, so you gotta look like a good person. They know what their friends look like, gotta look like a friend. And then they, uh, they know when someone fucking talks like they know what they're doing. You gotta be able to talk through any conversation without any ahs, ahs, or, uh, or stuttering. And you have to keep looking at them. So when you guys role play, you need to role play by looking at each other like this and don't fucking look away, no matter what. And you gotta keep your hands out. Don't put your hands like this, don't put your hands like this, and don't put your hands like this. Keep your hands here, okay? Because your hands will shuffle. They'll shuffle, we'll be like, oh yeah, so I got this thing, and then you know that, and then, then this, and then it's like, it's like, and you may see me doing it here and it's weird, but when you're one-on-one -on -one with somebody, like that shit creates energy, you know what I'm saying? So what do you guys think? Does that help you guys? Hell yeah. 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 Guys, I'm telling you, listen, man. No one, no one obsesses with like, with like development anymore. Fuck, fuck sales training. Self-development. Okay. By the way, you guys uh, want to land a hot chick? You wanna, you wanna, you wanna close someone on something? It's not just for solar in here, guys. Like this will get you whatever you want. You know, you want your girl to get freaky with you at night? You gotta close that ass. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Amen. You can't just say, babe, tonight I want to do some different positions. <laughs> what? <laughs> you got it. You got it. No, but my point is, you got to sell this keep shit. Them into the position. Hey, no, but you want your kids to go to bed on time? Yeah. Right? What do you do? You want your kids to go to bed on time? You got to sell them to go to bed. Yeah. Shit, my kids never want to go to bed. But I got to sell them. Yeah. You know? I got to bribe them and shit. And so, like, I'm just telling you guys, like, the art of communication to me is the biggest hole in every industry, okay? So if you guys can get that down, you guys will be dangerous though. So. Okay, Ian, are you finishing this out right here? Yep. Okay, guys, everybody give it up for him. Hey guys, I just want to tell you, you're the true one percenters. You made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor, share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video, comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.